Oh, hey everybody. Welcome back to the channel. Last week, Friday Night's Live, we were talking about this PTO unit that I was working on off of this dump truck that these guys managed to tear up. And I thought I'd do a little video, putting it back together, show you the differences between the worn out parts I was showing you on the live and the new stuff. And it's a pretty simple little device, but maybe you'll enjoy watching it go back together. So what we've got here is a main case. This is a Muncie unit, TG6BA6906Z1KX. And if you look in a Muncie book and decode that, basically what this is, it's a cable drive unit, or a cable shifted unit rather, that is set up to work on an Allison 2000 series automatic transmission. And what we've done I've already torn it apart off camera. Obviously, we were talking about that last week. And showed you guys in the live these torn up gears. Now, let's do a little side by side comparison. There's the new one. I'll try and get that angle in there so you can see both of them and, and compare them. But if you look, you see the nice straight cut edges on this clutch ring on both sides of it versus the one that these guys have ground the teeth half down off of from not stopping a unit before they shift it into gear. And the input gear, the clutch, the clutch ring slides on there and that's how it engages and you'll see as we put the unit together how it works but see the nice clean edges there to a little triangular point basically to allow this to engage easily on the gear now we're going to go ahead and show you the old worn out one once again ground about half that tooth off it's no wonder the thing wouldn't engage. So, what I'm going to do, show you guys how this thing goes back together. Now, there's nothing wrong with the bearings, there's nothing wrong with the output shaft here, so I'm not going to take it apart. However, it has gone through the parts washer, it is clean and the bearings are dry. So what I'm going to do, is just put a little spot of automatic transmission fluid on that bearing. You guys can't see. There's the bearing in there. Just so it doesn't start dry. And we'll do the same on this side before we put the cover on, but I'm not going to do it now, so I'm not making a mess all over the bench. So that bearing's been lubed. Now we'll flip this guy around here. And try and keep it in frame for you guys so you can see what's going on. Well, anyways. So, let's see here. Now this gear was not worn. It just uh, kind of goes for the ride. This is the gear that engages with the output gear. So what we're going to do is take a little bit of trans gel here, and just put a little bit inside where the shaft goes. So we got some lubrication, not wearing things out first start up. We're going to put it all together, a clutch ring, and our gear. Again, put a little bit of lube here, and a little bit right here. These are our thrust washers. 
they got to be on here. Again, having the trans gel on here will help keep them in place. There. I'm going to stand this thing up. We've got two notches here in the case. Let's get it over here so you can see. Two notches here in the case. These a little notch here on our thrust washer lines up with that. So we're going to slide this whole assembly in here. Now, don't do it like me, put it together backwards, dumbass. That's what happens when you start paying more attention to the camera than what you're working on. All right. Try this again. All right. If you look at this gear, this is where your clutch ring rides. It goes together like that. Slides into the case. Got a thrust washer goes in here, and our other thrust washer on the other side goes in here. And our shaft, it keeps it all in place, just slides right through everything, and there we go. And you know what I forgot to do? Is if you look on the side of the case here, on both sides, you got a roller bearing or a needle bearing, rather. I put a little bit of trans gel in that too, so it's not starting dry. And we'll do the same on this side. Just pack that bearing. Once this thing warms up, transmission fluid from the transmission will get in there and lubricate it. And that pre-lube will just wash out. Now we got our shaft in here. I'll show you how this thing works. You got your drive gear here. This is what gets driven by the transmission. When it stops, you slide the fork, or the fork will slide the clutch collar over, which engages the gear and turns on the PTO. And we'll show you how that goes together. And I'm also going to show you the wear and damage that was done to the cover plate and the shift fork assembly from abuse. Now, we've got our little covers that go on here with a gasket that keeps our shaft in place. All right, the gaskets here, just a little, it's got a little print on one side it doesn't matter which way it goes. We'll set that in place. Cover. You can see it's marked. You got a little dimple right here that helps with the alignment of that pin. And it's marked this side out. That, of course, goes to the outside of the case. And look at that spilling transmission fluid all over the bench anyways because I put too much in that bearing. Oh well. Rather make a mess and have a dry start. Just like so. Get a rag and mop this up real quick. Now 
and we'll come over to the other side and do the exact same thing. The other cover is identical, dimple, this side out. Go ahead and drop it on there like so. I like to put a little bit of blue Loctite on these. It's tucked up under the truck, real pain in the ass to get to. Don't want it coming loose and causing a leak. Forgot to do that on the other side, so we'll take it apart again and throw a little bit on there. That's simple, just like that. And I'll bore you guys and make me make you watch me take it apart. Put the Loctite on it. Just use blue, guys. This is an aluminum case. No reason to use red or definitely don't want to use green. That stuff requires heat to get loose. Not trying to make these things stay in here for eternity. We just don't want them to come out without a tool. Just a quarter 20 doesn't need a whole bunch of torque. And that's all there is to that. That's all there is to the gear train in this thing. Real simple. Real simple unit. So now I want to show you. Here's our new cover plate. Oh. 150 some odd dollars of it. This is actually the cheapest part of the whole mess. Still can't get over. $300 for that input gear, guys. This is an expensive fix. So, all you drivers out here running these trucks that think you know it all, if your boss shows you how to operate something, Listen to him, man. If this equipment don't run, you ain't working. You ain't working, you ain't making money. That equipment ain't working, your boss ain't making money. Your boss ain't making money, he might go out of business. You never know. Then you're looking for a job. Respect the equipment. There's no excuse for abusing it. When I get done with this video, I'm not going to bore you watching me crawl around like a bug on my back underneath this truck putting this damn thing back on but I will end the video with showing the proper operation of a PTO unit like this with an automatic trans. Now here's the other thing when you're sitting there grinding shoving on that handle trying to shove this thing into gear rather than just letting it stop and putting it in like you're supposed to you get so much play Worn. What happened is we've worn this fork here in the cover so bad. Look at all this play. There is all of three-eighths of an inch of free movement there. And if you look, when you shift it, that thing barely even moves. We'll compare it to the new one here. Nice positive engagement. Let's see, we don't have any side to side slop. So, yeah, guys, just, you know, show a little respect to the equipment that you run. It's most of y'all getting paid by the hour, anyways. Spend the extra couple seconds to let the thing spin down or whatever type of piece of equipment you're using. Let it do what it's got to do to properly engage it. If it's grinding and growling and howling at you, it's unhappy for some reason or other. And when it's unhappy, things end up like these parts I'm just showing you. By the time we're done with parts and labor on this, this bill fix this truck is going to be over $1,500.
just kind of sucks. But it all could have been avoided. I'm just taking care of it. Uh, proper operation of it, I should say. So anyways, the final piece to go on is this cover. And all we need to do is work our fork into the clutch ring there. And she sets right down on the case. And there's six bolts that holds it on. Just like that. Six bolts that I'm also going to put a little bit of blue Loctite on, save for the two, which is going to be these two here that I will put Loctite on later when I'm putting this thing back together under the truck because the, the bracket for the shift cable mounts on those two bolts. So just put us a little drop on each one here. And you saw I put the gasket on there already. And these don't have to be real tight either. Just snug them down. Don't want to blow the gasket out. Cause a leak. And like I said, these two here. We'll add the Loctite to later. Like at some point, somebody put a longer bolt, but it don't bottom out, so it's going to be fine. Probably because of the thickness of the bracket. There you have it. Now see, when this thing's spinning, we move our lever, and she goes into gear, drives the output shaft. Move the lever the other way. And she comes out of gear. Now, if this is spinning, well, I can't really can't really demonstrate it here on the bench. But if you can see if this thing, if this gear here is rotating at say two, three thousand RPM, whatever your gear reduction and everything adds up to, and you try to slide that onto it, it's just going to sit there and grind. That's why you have to bring the transmission to a complete stop before you shift, and then she'll pop into gear. There you go. One last piece of the puzzle is the hub adapter that the hydraulic pump goes to. I'm gonna install the new seal. I'll show you guys how that goes too. This goes on here like so, and your, your drive, your pump drive mounts on here. So the seal, we're going to drive it in this way. The seal's going to go in like this, so your dry side is out here. Because you're doing it that way, you got to have a seal driver that properly fits. If you got one that's too small, you're going to damage the actual seal part of this. And if you got one that's too big, well, you won't be able to drive the seal all the way in. This one fits just right. All we got to do is tap it in. Tap it in. 
like Happy Gilmore. Give it a little tappity tap, tap, tap. Just like that. Anyways, so this cover can go on this pump several ways. Or not the pump, but the, the case. Can go on several ways. Before I took it apart, I marked with the four bolts that are getting used so it goes back on the same orientation. There's no gasket that goes on here. Some of these units do use a gasket. This particular one does not. It instead uses an O-ring. Just put the O-ring right over the bearing here. Gonna put a little bit of a little bit of trans gel in the seal. Lubricate that seal. We don't want to mess up the new seal. Get a little bit on the shaft too. And we can see here. This guy is just going to set right on. Like so. Alright, last piece of the puzzle, our four bolts, just a spot here, on each one. Those holes are blind in the case, so we don't have to worry about putting any kind of sealer on here. Just some, once again, a little spot of Loctite. Snug them down in a crisscross pattern like so. And there we have it. One Muncie PTO unit built. Now, you might ask why'd I buy the whole cover instead of buying the pieces, parts here to rebuild this one. Cover itself looks fine. And the truth is the cover itself is fine, but it was an availability thing. This entire cover assembly was not only available quicker, but it was actually at the end of the day, by the time you figured in the, my labor to tear this all apart and, and rebuild it and what it costs to just buy this one and slap it on the unit after we built the inside, it was actually worked out to be less money. So all I got to do is pull our indicator switch out. This is the switch. Works real similar to a neutral safety switch or a backup light switch and a 727 Mopar. And this is for the indicator light inside the truck. That goes here and the new one. And we're done. So I'm going to end the video right here and jump under the truck, put this damn thing in couple hours we'll come back and I'll show you how it works when it's all put together thanks for watching you guys all right guys so we're back under this truck a couple hours and a whole bunch of cussing later we got this damn thing back in there it is up in there and there's the pump that attaches the back of it now, let's jump up in there and see if it works. All right, so we're in the cab of the truck. I'm gonna show you how this thing works. So there's the controls for it. And if you look, here's the one that engages the unit. And if we start to come in with it just in park or neutral, hear that? It's about all I'm going to do. I don't want to hurt it. But if you keep yanking on it, it's just going to grind like hell. So what we do, we put transmission into reverse or drive. We're going to put it in drive and gear because I don't want to hear that backup alarm going. And then we're going to put our PTO in. And we'll put it back in neutral. 
Input shaft starts spinning the trans again, and PTO is engaged. And this one here, you can hear the hydraulics working. I'll take you out here. And there's the bed going up. Bed can hold and bed can go down. Pretty simple, but that's not why we're here today. We're here talking about the PTO and how to not burn it up. And then you just pop it out and it's out and go about your business. Go get another load, go park the truck, do whatever it is you're gonna do. Next time, put in gear, engage the PTO, go again. It's that simple guys. Doesn't take any more time to do it that way than it does to jam it into gear. There's no reason to destroy stuff. This bill is a little over $1,300. I just totaled it up. And this is the owner of this truck's got to pay to fix it because an employee trashed it for him. You guys remember These trucks are here to make everybody money, the drivers and their owners. And if they're sitting at the shop getting fixed, they ain't making anybody any money. Now, I appreciate the business. It's how I build my hot rods, working on these trucks. But nonetheless, I'd rather fix them when they just wear out or something goes bad. I really hate seeing needless destruction. So there you have it. That's how you operate a PTO the right way. It's how you fix one when you tear it up from not. <laughs> so hope you all got something out of this. Hope you enjoyed the video. We'll see you in the next one. Catch you later.